Hey, it's Joe Lines from The Automator, and I'm really excited to release this document. Uh, I've been working on it for probably like a year. Uh, there's so many ways to connect to programs with a hotkey, and um, there's not really good documentation on it. And so I tried to go through, you know, clearly identify different ways. Um, I actually ran this by several people, um, you know, auto hotkey experts. And uh, some of these, the one thing I'll say is that some of them are actually redundant in the sense that they're... Um, auto hotkey itself is wrapping like a DLL call or maybe a, a send message. Um, so it'll simplify, auto hotkey simplifies it. Um, so if you really knew what you were doing, you could just use a DLL call multiple times in these instances. Um, however, uh, this example is how you could use auto hotkey to do these things. So um, those of you who are more technical, don't try to call me out and say those are really the same thing. Um, I get that. But a lot of people who are new to auto hockey, you know, they don't need to know that stuff, right? That's a beautiful thing, auto hockey. Why, why not take advantage of the fact that auto hockey is wrapping them and simplifying it for us? So um, be, let me jump into here. Let me start sharing. Uh, here we go. And um, before I really get going here, so make sure you like and share. That'd be great if you could do that for me and comment on the video. What I've done here is try to also not just give you the information. I mean, it's like, here's an approach. Right. What we're going to cover in this video is uh, here's the technology. Um, here's a code library, like, you know, whether it's maybe on the automator or the forum or Microsoft. Um, here are videos. Most of them are videos I've covered, but I haven't covered everything. So there's some from um, like uh, Isaiah uh, in uh, Raptor X on Udemy. Um, and then if some of the topics are covered in the Udemy course, uh, we mentioned which Udemy course they're in. Um, these are all hyper. These are I think all of them are hyperlinks are close to it. Um, but then I also rated each one. I gave it an overall, and that I just added everything up, which to me isn't really the best approach, but I just wanted something simple. Um, now, for what these things are, this first one, R1, is how reliable is it on one computer, right? So is it going to work on one computer? And then the second one is very similar. Is how, many is gonna, how reliable is it going to be on more than one computer? So maybe not just your computer, but when you're changing you know, OS systems or giving it to some a coworker or whatever, right? Those two things are very different from each other. And what I probably should have done, you can, of course, you're going to have this document if you want, um, is you could take these and multiply this times the rest or this times the rest. But adding them all together doesn't, it's not honestly the best approach. However, I wanted to keep this simple and easy for us to discuss. Um, and so this keeps it very simple, right? Um, but just to be clear, this is on one computer. This is on more than one computer. Um, the SP is for speed. Everything is a scale of 1 to 10, where 1 is poor and 10 is excellent, right? So speed, the higher the number, the faster it is, right? Um, SI is simplicity. Um, and, and bear with me here, because I was trying to keep that scale where 1 is poor and 10 is great. Uh, because simplicity, the simpler it is, that means it's really easy to program in, so to speak. Right, so even a, a noob can jump into this very quickly. So a 10 is a good score, right? It's not really complex, it's very easy. Um, the P is the prevalence. It's like how often that technology is available in the tool you're trying to automate, the program you're trying to connect through. Like, so let's say COM is a great example. COM is an amazing, robust approach if it's available, right? Often it's not available, unfortunately. Otherwise, it, I would be like, just jump to COM. Uh, but comms not always there. So it is a very, very, um, um, it's reliable, just not that present. And then E is how many examples you'll find or code libraries of using that technology, which again, if you're not an advanced programmer, having a lot of those can really help you, right? So let's, all right, let's jump in here. Let's start going down. I'm gonna do them one at a time just so we don't get lost. So with the highest score, I have them sorted from the highest to lowest. And again, you might change these, right? Do what makes sense to you. Um, so the first one we're talking about is just reading and writing from the registry, right? This is, it's a great easy way. If you're doing something where you're trying to connect to the program and understand what's going on, if they have set their values in the registry, like this is, it scores great across one and multiple computers. Speed is super fast. Um, it's, it's, once you get the hang of it, it's actually pretty simple. It's just the first time you're reading them, it's a little confusing. But once you get the hang of it, it's really easy. Um, it's prevalent. It's, everything has the Windows registry. Um, and there are a lot of examples on it. So this is why this one won, right? It scored really well on almost everything. Um, so, and then, so again, here's the, um, here are examples. I think these go to the forum possibly. And then over here, um, we have examples to the, uh, no, sorry. Let's see here. Let me click. Now, if I click it, it's going to highlight it. So um, anyway, it doesn't really matter, right? But you'll have hyperlinks here. By the way, I tried putting all this into Excel. However, 
excel in each cell when you have multiple links it was breaking and so i'm like okay that won't work um so basically i'm going to convert it into a pdf and make that available so everyone can can open it i really wanted to have it in excel because that way we could easily sort on different columns however it just it just was going to be a real pain um and i want to get this out so all right what's our next one here uh clipboard manipulation right this is another great one right why it's super reliable across these two right either whether it's your computer or you change it to another computer the clipboard is a clipboard is a clipboard, right? Not going to break too much. Um, very, very fast overall. Uh, very simple. Well, some things are a little more advanced than others, right? But generally speaking, how we typically use it, very simple. Um, tons of, uh, uh, I'm sorry, it's available. Like in all most programs you're doing, often you can use the clipboard to interact with it. Uh, and there's tons of examples, right? Um, this next one, file read and write. Now, this one depends on what your task is, uh, but being able to read and write files um, and use the, either the file object or working with files and looping over things, uh, very, very helpful. Uh, scores high. You know, it doesn't really matter what computer you're on, whether it's just yours or other people's. Um, speed is good. Uh, or, uh, yeah, speed simplicity is good. Um, it's very prevalent, right? It's, it's often a lot of programs use files and that, so that can really be helpful. Uh, and the and then there's a ton of examples on it. Um, program specific API. Now this is not we're not talking about a a web service API here. This is like using Python um, connecting to the given program or even Windows, which maybe actually Windows might be separate here. Um, but uh, it scores really well. It doesn't matter if whether you're on a single computer or multiple computers. Super fast. Here it's out. It, it is a little harder to understand and how to get get used to working with it. Um, unfortunately, like I I in the forum, which I think I linked to it here, I have examples where I used Auto Hockey to connect to Python and do stuff, and I used Python to connect um, within Auto Hockey. So um, those are links there. Um, and then there's the oh the, oh here's the Windows API. So there's a lot there, which is amazing, right? If you're trying to see what's going on with your computer, Auto Hockey connects to the Windows API like nothing, right? It's just it's amazing. Um, so that's a great one. Com objects, as I mentioned earlier, right? Look at these scores um, we gave this. So Isaiah and I went through this. He rated it also. I um, also rated it, and I kind of combined his and mine. Uh, but the uh, the scores, right? Com is amazing. It's a programmatic way. It's super fast. It is a little complex. Um, the prevalence is the biggest one that really hurts it, right? Is because if you're uh, if what you're connected to doesn't have a com object, you you can't use it at all, and it's just. It's in a lot of Microsoft programs. It's in non-Microsoft programs, right? We have a, here's a link to 23 different programs that it um, connects to, right? That have COM objects that you'd be surprised it has it. Uh, and there's there's a lot of stuff on it. We've done several webinars. Um, I think these are actually, some of these are links to, to webinars. Um, and so it's, it's a great, great way to, if it's available, that's my go-to for almost every time, right? If it's available. So it would score higher here if it was always available. Um, send and post messages, right? These are these are great ways. Um, very reliable, whether you're on one computer or many computers. Very fast. Uh, there, it's a little more complex, right? It takes some studying and learning how to use it, uh, but the, it is very prevalent, right? You can connect to a lot of programs using the send message or post message stuff. Uh, and there are a fair amount of examples. I wish there were more, but um, especially with older programs, there's a lot of examples. With newer ones, there's not so many. Uh, but it's a great way to connect to programs. Um, controls, right? Controls, I, I absolutely love them. Um, the, the Windows, older style Windows controls. So they're very accurate, you know, speed, uh, reliable with both the uh, one computer, many computers. Um, they are pretty darn fast. I, you know, they're also, we could have a thing in here, which I probably should have had another dimension of, does it interfere with the person using the computer? Can it run in the background, right? Because that's an important dimension that um, you might want to consider when you're doing all this stuff. And controls usually allow you to do this with even if the person's using the computer, it doesn't interfere with it, right? Which is a great thing. Uh, but they're 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 fast, they're prevalent. Um, unfortunately, they're going away a lot because the newer like ribbon structure things um, does doesn't use those older style controls. Um, but there are a ton of examples on there. Um, over here in this one, I on uh, I think I linked to both. I covered, I had like over 40 videos on the intermediate course on working with controls. But if you look, I think it's in here on the playlist on YouTube. Um, I have a lot of videos, a lot of the same content. Uh, but controls are amazing if you're using an older, connecting to an older program. Shell hooks are another really great one. 
very fast, very reliable. You know, doesn't matter if you're working on one or versus many computers, um, super fast. Uh, but the uh, simplicity, like they, they seem really complex when you try reading about them. However, um, I would highly encourage you to go watch this video here. Uh, Jackie walked me through an example that he ha um, saw on the forum where someone demonstrated how to use shell hooks. And it was so easy. I was blown away. He did a great job of showing just how easy it is. And, and I was I was shocked, honestly. I was like, wow, that um, they're, they're so reliable. They're super fast. Uh, and they're just great, and they, they are very prevalent, so it's a great one. Uh, the status bar, now this one, I, I've had this one save my butt. I've had programs where I couldn't check on what's going on with the program, but I could read the status bar, right? So a lot of the, the bottom line, a lot of older programs, you can programmatically get it. Sometimes I think you can set it, but usually you can ping it and check to see what's there, and that can help you understand what's going on with the program you're trying to connect to, right? So it's, it's a good one. Um, again, it's the... Um, the prevalence, it's not as common as it used to be, right? So that, that's where that one gets hurt somewhat on, on scoring, but it's a, it is a good one to know. Um, now, the web API calls, uh, this is like a, a web service, right? This is where you're connecting to APIs from, um, you know, usually a database that you're querying online. These, a lot of vendors will have tools that you can connect to programmatically. This is phenomenal that you can do this auto hockey. It doesn't matter whether it's one computer or many computers. Very fast. Um now, the simplicity, let me come back to that one here in a second. Uh, but the prevalence, this one probably, actually, I, I'd say I could bu bump it a little bit on the scoring and the prevalence because it just depends on what you're doing. But there are so many, like with the webinar we did on this, I think there was over 17,000 public APIs out there. And, of course, every browser connection, when you do a browser call to a web page, even when you're querying it, that's an API call technically. And often you can... Um, you know, monitor the traffic and just reverse engineer it. You don't even have to use the browser and you can do a lot of stuff with it. Um, it is a little advanced, right? Uh, but but back to the the um, the simplicity and the prevalence. Well, the simplicity is the one I was really concerned about. It's kind of funny because they have public APIs that, that, again, you can have access to. For me, I can d dive into the public API and honestly doing the... Uh, learning how to use their API is usually really straightforward and easy. It's the stupid OAuth 2. If the only approach you have is using their OAuth 2 and you have to work on this handshake and often they're very complex. Um, it takes me far, far longer than the actual working with the API does to, to get the handshake down. Um, I, I wish they would standardize it because there are no two. I mean, I've never <laughs> run into two except for like from Google where they keep the same approach across all others uh, are the same. And it's just, it's a, it's a time suck, right? Um, but if it's something you're going to use a lot, it's well worth the investment because there are so many advantages to an API, a web service API call compared to um, doing like browser web scraping and things. Uh, all right, let's keep going. Um, sending mouse and key clicks and key stro um, strokes. So it, it does much better on one computer, on your computer, right? Than on, and this is, this, this, this will break down when you're doing it on different people's computers, just things you would think they'd be the same, but often they just don't work quite the same. Um, the speed also, this is a, it takes a hit on the speed because you have to wait. This is really, if you saw the video on it where uh, Isaiah and I, we were talking about it, the, the difference between like an API approach versus the human interface approach. Um, when you're sending keystrokes, right, you're basically replicating what a human would do with the keyboard. And you have to add some padding and timing and then some other checks. Um, so just things slow down a bit. Now, having said that, they're really simple to use, right? This is where most people, you start learning auto hockey, this is what you start using it, right? It's super easy, very prevalent, tons of examples, right? It's prevalent because almost everything has a human interface, right, that we're automating. And so um, it's a slam dunk because you're just replicating what the human is doing, right? So this is a great way. It's just when you're going to share it across, other, give it to other people, a lot of times it'll you'll you'll come up with some issues, right? So it's a good one to know about. Um, DLL calls are phenomenal, right? Um, they're they're very very reliable both on one or many computers. Um, super fast. Unfortunately, they're they're more complex, right? And when you break it down, they're not too complex because all you have to think about is they're a function. The difficulty is you have to understand what language that function is in and be able to program in that language. So it might be C, it might be C sharp or C++, and you have to program in that language. Those those what you put in the parameters. Sometimes you have to define variables and do other stuff, right? And we're not used to that on hockey because auto hockey takes care of all that crap, which which honestly I hate, 
Um, so I love DLL calls over, I'm sorry, I love auto hockey overall. DLL calls are great because you can do so many things with it. However, that you do have to understand how to read the, the Microsoft documentation or whatever document, whatever DLL you're connecting to in order to understand how to shove the parameters in there correctly, right? And get your information out. Um, we do have a couple webinars. Um, oh no, sorry. It was one webinar, part one and part two, where we talk through a lot of the stuff. Um, you know, maybe we'll do another one on it. They're, they're a great functionality that auto hockey can do this. Uh, it, it opens up a ton of doors. Uh, the problem again, is just, you have to understand your programming in that other language. All right. The next one here, menu select. Uh, now this one, like again, older programs, like let's say the notepad, right? The, that file menu at the top or site, even, you know, our studio, they have those older file menus at the top. Those are the menus I'm talking about here. Um, again, these are pretty reliable. Um, they're, they're pr actually pretty fast. Um, they're very simple to program with. Unfortunately, the prevalence, they're just not as prevalent as they used to be, right? Those programs are going away. Now, again, if you're automating older programs, auto hockey is simply incredible, right? It's a great tool. Newer programs, it, they don't have that. And so it doesn't shine on that one, right? Um, but, and, and there are a lot of examples on it. Uh, so just, just note, uh, this is something definitely, if you're connecting to an older program, look to see if you can automate the menus, uh, cause it's a great way. Uh, the, this win management's, um, WMI tasks things. It's an interesting way you can pull information about your computer. You can pull info out about it. Um, so it's just good to know it's there. It is, uh, it doesn't matter whether it's one computer or many computers. It's really kind of like the windows API. Think of it that way, right? Um, it's very fast. It's, it's not very simple. It's really kind of weird. It looks like you're running a query, um, against like the windows API. Um, so it's a little weird, although it's not overly complex. It's just different. All right. Um, there's it, it, it's kind of like Tom in the sense of if the data you want happens to be there, it's great. However, often, you, you know, you don't need it for it, but it's just, I wanted it in this list because it's a good thing to know it's, a, it's available. Okay. Image search and pixel search, right? These, this is the other one. It's the big intro for people with new, new to auto hockey. Now, now look at this. Unfortunately, um, like on one oh, those numbers are reverse. Uh, this should be, um, so on, this should be a, a, a seven here. And it won't change the scores, of course, because um, because uh, they still add up all the same. But image search stuff often will work okay on one computer, but the second you try using it on even on your own other computer, even with the same same OS and everything, it's just things go crazy, right? The resolution is slightly different. The image, the colors are slightly different. There's so many things that when you're looking for an image, that can break, and so. Um, I don't overall, I almost never use these. However, when I do, um, you know, it's for something that it doesn't matter if it fails and it's something quick and easy. Uh, but it, you know, they are, uh, prevalent. You can find a lot of examples of them. Um, they're relatively fast, depending on what you're doing. They can be fairly fast, uh, 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 uh simple and, and somewhat fast. It depends if you have a lot of screens and you don't have an idea where it's going to be and you have to search everywhere. It takes a little longer, but for a program, you know, honestly, it's not that bad, um, but just that they break a lot. So that's why this is down here. Now, this next one, actually, it's the next two. Um, you know what? Let me talk to them. Yeah, these are the bottom, the bottom two, and then we're done. I want to talk about them together because they're overall very similar. Now, it's it's a shame because these guys, in my opinion, should be at the top of the list, right? They, they have the most potential. This Microsoft Active Accessibility Object. Um, here's some great examples here of uh, on the, the forum, this um, Gswigs tutorial and ACC library from Jethro. Um, they're, they're great ways. And we actually, you know, and that's why I merged these here together. So there's actually, they're all kind of related here. We did a couple webinars on them, both. Uh, we covered them first in the various ways to automate in parts one and two. And then the next month, we actually had a working session of using them. Um, so there's there's lots of examples here where you can go into it uh, and, and start learning. However, the um the ACC library it's limited in the sense you can have a um you you pull it up and you can drag on things you can peek into them and you can see how kind of like with the controls and using Notepad you can isolate very small areas. Um, however, triggering you know writing code to trigger what you want isn't as straightforward and easy as you might think, and often things will break. But you can actually identify like the area. So what you could do is programmatically get like where the image is, you know, where the thing is, and then send a mouse click there. So you kind of combine blend 
the finding of it and then sending a mouse click or maybe even a control click right to the to that location um so it, it really should be a lot higher however it's there's just it's uh it takes you got to be a more advanced programmer is really what it boils down to right so that that's why this one suffers the the microsoft ui automation um so what's really fascinating is this acc uh the microsoft active accessibility uh technology is actually deprecated and now this ui automation is what has taken over um now in every tool i've ever looked at with the acc library i can still see uh I can peek inside it with the ACC library. So even though it's deprecated, it's still available, right, in most tools. It hasn't gone away. Um, so it is this ACC viewer is a great tool to be able to peek in there and see stuff. Unfortunately, we don't have a really good example like that for AutoHotKey. There, um, there's a couple scripts, and I link to them here, with examples that you can look, you can easily peek like under your mouse where it is and get the text programmatically. It's not doing like OCR or something. It's programmatically getting that. It's really cool. However, we don't have an interface now. I have one for Microsoft that I can see the technology and see what's available. And in that one, what you can do is basically you identify the thing you're looking at and then you can send the default action to it. Um, however, that's that's really all you can, for the most part, all you can do. You can send a click to it or you can send the default action to it. But you can't like, you know, necessarily set the text value to a certain thing. If You know, I could be wrong there, but um, it's not as robust as I would like. However, it's everywhere. Like basically, even on a browser, we should be able to peek inside and automate a lot of the stuff that you wouldn't think of with the browser versus, you know, notepad versus whatever. Um, we can peek into like everything. And it's it's really written for people with handicaps like um, the blind or, or deaf, right? And, and have uh, allow programmers to write things to make people with disabilities have easy access to them. So um, here are the 17 ways. Now, again, you know, we have scored these, but feel free to, to change them, right? You'll, when you get this document, you update it. But what you should do is one, know that each of these are available, right? That's the really most important part. Know that they're available. And when you get stuck, you know, you, you have a way to start working through these things. And more importantly, you have links to the stuff, which that's what doesn't really exist anywhere. At some point, I would love, I'll tell you two things we're working on. Um, one is I would love, and I say we're working on it. Um, some of them we are, and some of them we plan to, right? The one we are working on is basically for this UI automation um, the tool, like ACC Viewer, to be able to drag and click and peek inside of things um, and then programmatically write things to click you know, them and, and without having to be a brain surgeon, right? Um, or Isaiah is, um, because he's the one solving it, but it's, uh, you know, I, I can't, I mean, it's it's really advanced and, and we've looked at a lot and like, man, it's it's complicated. Um, so we are working on that, but it's gonna take a while because we just don't have the bandwidth. Uh, the second one that I would love to do is to have a tool that would basically, one tool would, you know, you drag it, drag it to the program or that element you're trying to connect to, and it would go through and test across all, all of these, or at least, let's say five or seven of the top ones and say, hey, you know what? Here are the ones that are available and given, you know, have some sort of ranking to them and say, hey, you know what? Hey, if comms available, just always say calm, right? If comms not available, then default to this and this and have a hierarchy because people will comment on the videos. Hey, Joe, I'm trying to do this and this isn't available. How would you connect to it? I'm like, I, I don't know. Like it, it takes work and it takes knowing these tools and to try each one of the tools to see what's available and what isn't. Um, right now, there's not one tool that has all of these things in it that tells you here is the best approach, right? And that's what I would I would absolutely love to have. I think that would help a lot of people. So at some point, hopefully, we'll we'll get to um, make that available. But uh, anyway, hope you guys uh, enjoyed this. Uh, you know, use the URL, which I forgot to put right here, but I'll have it in the, um, I'll do maybe a little intro here with the URL, um, and I'll put it in the description. But uh, download it, um, use all the links. Tell me if you think there's something else that should have been in this list. Um, I actually had one other one, the standard in and out, and Isaiah and I, we were working on it and working on it. We just couldn't come up with the, a real way that, like, it's helpful. It, it does work. It does allow you to programmatically get input from, like, command line stuff, but it's just so rare that it, we just thought it was just, and, and there's not good documentation on it, so we just, we left that one out. Um, but anyway, I hope this helps, and cheers.